So, before we get started, because um, I just got the news an hour ago, if you did not see, I am officially going to Grand Slam tomorrow, which is huge. I'm really excited. Um, I just, I really can't believe it. I just wanted to share that. I'm going to Grand Slam tomorrow. Like, wow, I literally put on my calendar, like, hello, Grand Slam. But, we're not here to talk about AEW. We are here to talk about Monday Night Raw. And as Monday Night Raw is trying to keep AEW away from beating them for a third week in a row, who do you call when you're in desperate need of ratings? You call Roman Reigns. You call the Tribal Chief. And you call the Usos. Whether it was a six-man match to six man tag team match to start the show or the triple threat main event but on top of that we have a very cringe segment between former tag team champions woman tag team champions and in fact we have new women's tag team champions and an interesting segment between a goddess and the queen all that and more as we are here for another episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling as we are reviewing the September 20th edition of Monday Night Raw and we are starting So, the beginning of the show. Biggie is our double world title champion. I can't believe this is actually a thing. He came up with a new day. It was a new day reunion. They haven't really been together since the brand split. Well, since the draft last November. And what an emotional time. Just having Big E as world champion is insane. He's the sixth African American world heavyweight champion ever in WWE history, which is crazy. And he is just so grateful from the love and support from the fans, all the wrestlers, and he even mentioned Brody because he said he was so grateful for everyone that's here on earth and he looked up above and said one great friend up in heaven, I was talking to Brody. And he's super excited but he can't focus on that because he has to deal with the bloodline, meaning the Usos and Roman Reigns. So this six man tag team match actually reminded me of what a main event of a live event would be just because it was so jam packed and it was really fun. It was just a basic fun six man tag team match, but it sadly got interrupted by the almighty, our former world heavyweight champion, Bobby Lashley. So he speared Big E, which distracted Xavier Woods. And that made Roman pin him, so the bloodline wins. So this sent everyone to a frenzy, and you know, Ro I don't know. I don't necessarily know why Roman was mad, because like it really didn't affect him. He still won. Um, so he was mad, and then Big E was mad, and everyone's like, "All right, we're just gonna do a triple threat match. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be Bobby versus Big E versus Roman." So this is also interesting because you can somewhat argue that this that you know. That could potentially, like, not that it could potentially be a Survivor Series match just because, like, you know, one of them's not going to be champion. But I just feel like it's such, like, a Survivor Series themed match. And speaking of Survivor Series, if you're in the New York area, they go on sale on Friday. I'm super excited. So the main event was really good. It was a really jam-packed match. Like I said, like, I actually feel like a lot of the tone of this Raw was very live event-y. Just because, you know, the live events are just trying to make it fun for the crowd. And they're trying to make the crowd invested again because AEW keeps beating them in the ratings. So, the match was really good. Roman Reigns is, of course, standing tall. At the end, he pins Bobby Lashley. So, I'm intrigued to see where this is going because I'm pretty sure at Extreme Rules, Big E is going to verse Bobby again. But then it's just a matter of what's going to happen at Saudi because that's going to be the next paper. You know, what's going to happen at Survivor Series. But I like that they are using Roman for like to try to get the ratings back but it does ruin the brand split because Roman is a Smackdown superstar so I don't understand why necessarily you had to ruin the brand split. I mean the other part of this is this week well the beginning of this week is actually WWE's European tour and there's a lot of superstars that are in London and in Europe right now. I know I think I think Drew's the only Raw superstar over there because I know like Becky's over there, Rollins is over there, Street Profits are over there so I believe um, Drew's the only one and a lot of people were surprised like oh why didn't Roman go to Europe so I guess like this was the reason you know so 
It just sucks that it ruins the brand split and they're trying to promote the draft because the draft is happening next week. Or two weeks. No, next week. Holy crap, that's scary. The draft is happening next week and we're already ruining it. So, that's a fun time. But from there, we're going to focus on our favorite thing, the women's division. And so we're going to start with Shane and Nia. So this match really should have happened, I kid you not, probably last year. The fact that we've kind of like just extended this feud for so long is insane. And Shayna won. And the, the part that was cringe was that she beat up Nia. And then Nia was screaming. And not like, you know, how a wrestler screams. Like, oh my god, I feel like part of my, like half my body's broken. Scream. She was shrieking, holding her elbow. Obviously this was kayfabe. This is not a real injury. And she was just trying to sell it. But the shrieking was high key annoying. And I'm my roommate and I, my roommate was in here. And she was like asking me a question about school and she like looked at the TV she goes, what's happening? I go, I don't even know. <laughs> don't ask me. She's just screaming for no reason. I mean the match was really good but like I said this match should have happened last year. The fact that they've really extended to September is a little crazy. Um, I guess we have to see. I would love to put Shayna back in the Royal Women's Championship picture when we get to Alexa and Charlotte. You know, we'll talk about it. But... I guess we'll see what happens. It's obviously going to result in a rematch somehow. I mean, Dewdrop and Eva Marie somehow had a rematch for no reason. Like, same result two weeks in a row. Actually, there were four women's segments on Raw. It's a huge upgrade, especially because there was rumors that Alexa and Charlotte's uh, segment was going to get cut. So, we go to Alexa's Playground. And on Alexa's Playground, her special cut was Charlotte. And they were talking about their match extreme rules on Sunday. And it so Alexa brought Charlie, which is the doll that represents Charlotte that's making fun of Lily. And Alexa, like, oh, you know, Alexa was like taunting Charlotte with it. And then Charlotte ripped the head off Charlie. And I was, oh, that's a no no. The segment was really good. I think Alexa definitely has improved with the character. I mean, I honestly think that she should win on Sunday. And when we get, like, when I do my predictions video, I will explain why I think she should win. So I'm rooting for her. But it's just interesting to see like Charlotte go from like feuding with the superhero and Rhea to like this super creepy, scary character. So that's really interesting to see. But the promos were really good. I think Charlotte has definitely gotten better on the mic. I know when she was away, when she had COVID and stuff like around Mania, she had said that she was really working on promos and you could definitely see the confidences there. So that was really interesting to see and I like that. And from there, well, I'll go on my rant about the women's safety titles. So, I will say, um, Cantor is a very touchy subject for me. If you know me personally, um, my dad is actually a two-time Cantor survivor, so Cantor is a very sensitive subject with me. And I love that they do the Connor Secure thing. I think it's fantastic. Pediatric Cantor is a serious issue. So, before their match, Nikki and Rhea came out and they cut a promo. And they were saying, like, you know, September is Pediatric Cancer Month, and obviously this is the second to last Monday Night Raw where, you know, you're going to have it sponsored by Connors Care because next month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so everything's going to be pink. So they go out here, like, talking about the donations and, like, we're going to do V for Victory for a cure for cancer. And I will say, like, I really like that they did this, but it, like, it just seems so awkward. I feel like Rhea and Nikki weren't necessarily the right people to do that segment because just as they were talking it was very weird. You know, it felt like they were reading off like a prompter or a script. I would have had can't like can't even think of like a top baby face on Raw right. I would have had, probably had Biggie do it, like Biggie and the New Day to kick off Raw, I would have had them do the segment. But the bigger picture is that they were dedicating this match to um, the kids who are affected by pediatric cancer and they're wrestling uh, Natty and Tamina for the women's tag team titles and the match was pretty good but Natty and Tamina lost by a roll up it wasn't even like a finishing move and like oh my god no it was by a schoolboy roll up so this is my problem and this is the problem I've always said literally since I've realized what they're doing with the women's tag team titles it's literally a waste of time because they're the Iconics and I'll argue Bailey and Sasha are really the only two tag teams that have been actual, like, no, I can't even argue Bailey and Sasha. The Iconics are really the only tag team that has won those titles. Like, every other women's tag team champion we've had so far in the three, in all the almost three years we've had the, those titles have been two wrestlers paired up for no reason. And I feel like... 
Nick, like, I like how they're doing Nikki and Rhea, but it's like, why waste time with them having a tag championship? You know, like, I don't personally like it. It's the reason I hate the tag team titles. It's the reason why for the past three months, I've literally gone on a brand saying they need to introduce a second moment's title just for, like, a Nikki or a Rhea or a Liv Morgan or do something because this is utterly ridiculous. Um, they're not going to hold it for very long. The fact that Shotzi and Knox, who has literally beaten Natty and Tamina, like, two or three weeks in a row, did not get the title opportunity before Rhea and Nikki is all very shocking to me. I really don't understand why, but I just, I don't, I don't like it. It gets me very angry. I hate women taking titles. We need a second woman's title. But... On the upside, I will argue this was a really fun Raw. You could tell that the momentum was really there. And, like, I'm not going to sit here and, like, make the argument for, like, 10 minutes or however long the video is. Like, oh, yeah, they're definitely doing it because AEW is beating them in the ratings. Because I don't want to think that. I think they want to do it to just be like, oh, like, you say that we're changing, but we really aren't. You know, because they really are rebranding the whole company right now because of the sale and just NXT and everything. So I want to hold out hope that the momentum that they had tonight is what they're going to follow. I think the draft is extremely going to help them with just trading people around because Raw is certainly slacking with superstars. I don't want to make the argument that Rollins is going to go to Raw, but I guess we'll see. So thank you for watching this video. Tune into my NXT review tomorrow. So now for Wednesday, I am not going to do a review of Grand Slam. Instead, I'm going to do a vlog. Um, I'm going to vlog my entire day starting at school and just you're gonna I'm gonna take you to my school day I'm gonna take you to our trash. I'm gonna take you to everything and just what it's like to go to an event with me I think that would be super interesting and super fun. It's something different for the network. We love content grading So I'm gonna do that instead um, You can tune into the AP for the AP review of the show Jackie's gonna be back on again and <laughs> Jackie's gonna be there with me So that's stuff's super fun, too, but yeah, so make sure to like this video comment subscribe what you guys thought on Monday Night Raw and I'll see you all tomorrow for my NXT review. Don't know when I'm taping it because I'm podcasting right after. Also, if you want to see me yell at Kyle, definitely check out the Bob Culture podcast.